Hi, when you go shopping for something, do you compare the price of something or do you compare the total cost of ownership? In this episode, we're going to compare the total cost of ownership versus the initial price. My name is Chris and welcome to this episode of Heavy Metal Money. Hey, welcome back. So we as personal finance bloggers and YouTubers, we often talk about how to save money and how to spend more wisely, right? Don't buy the crap you don't need. But there will come a time when you have to buy something. <laughs> things break, things wear out, or you just have to purchase something new. It happens. And when we're shopping for something, we typically often talk about the cost of it, right? The cost of something. But we, what we really are doing is comparing the price. So it's interesting. The price is what we pay for a good or service. Well, the cost can be the actual or perceived value over time of that, for that product or service that we are exchanging money for, okay? So for instance, a car is a great example, right? Let's say you're going to go shop for a car and the price may be a particular amount for that, that vehicle. However, the cost also includes, right, when you're going to go buy that car, you also need to pay registration, taxes, insurance to buy that car. That's, then you got to factor in ongoing maintenance for that car. You got to factor in repairs, right, over the lifetime of that of that vehicle. This, these are the things that you can factor into the total cost of ownership of owning a car. Now, I recently replaced the central air conditioner uh, a couple seasons ago. Um, my central air on my home was approaching 21 years old and it just couldn't keep up. I had tried, we, um, we charged up with, uh, with some coolant and I was able to get another couple seasons out of it, but uh, it, was, it was time to retire. So in shopping around for new AC units, you know, we looked at the price of the unit, right? I compared prices, but then we also compared how energy efficient it was. And it would cost me much less to run a brand new updated air conditioner that was 20 years newer um, to, to cool my home. It was that much more efficient. And so I could make that money back in a, in a relatively short amount of time. There are a lot of really great examples of this. Another really good one is when comparing appliances. For example, let's say you need to buy a new washing machine. Okay, well, you have one washing machine that's like $400. You have another one that's $550. So originally, you know, you look at the, the higher priced one and you look at the lower priced one, you're like, well, maybe I just don't wanna spend another $150. But then when you start comparing things like um, the repair rate, right, looking at reviews, and we found that the more expensive one, it's $150 more, had a much lower repair rate, which much more energy efficient and uses half the water. So again, while you may pay a little more upfront for the price of something, the total cost of ownership is much lower over time. So sometimes we can also find value and pay for convenience for that service or that, you know, product that we buy. You know, it's, you know, the comfort that you may get and maybe that's the price that you pay for. I've used this example before, but it's really kind of a good illustration here. I do value my time and convenience. And so I like to, I do decide to pay for Clear, a Clear membership at the airport and that's at clearme.com. And this is so it allows me to breeze through airport security with no weight in any sort of security line. But look at it this way. The cost of that ongoing membership fee has tremendous value to me in the time that I save going through airport security. So again, this was a really quick one. I really do appreciate you watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and post in the comments. What are some other examples of paying the price of something versus the total cost of ownership? Again, my name is Chris. We'll see you next time on Heavy Metal Money.